Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me. This is Game God Fluent, bringing you episode two of Let's Play Avernum Escape from the Pit. We have to play on 1080p. Um, it's going to be how it was at the beginning of the first video or the previous video. Um, because if I switch to a lower resolution, the uh, video gets smaller in the box when recording. Oh, well. But anyway, let's get right into it. Okay, so let's move this off to the side. Uh, we're exploring, and we met Logren, a fellow who wants us to serve him, and we might not make it out of here alive, in his words, but it looks like someone's here. How to fight. These buttons set your current attack type, melee or missile click on a photo attack it hmm someone has discarded some javelins on the floor ahead it's always satisfying to fling a few projectiles ahead before engaging in melee when you attack you will use your default weapon this can be a melee weapon like a sword or a missile weapon like a javelin or bow get the javelins and equip them you can switch your default weapon by pressing its button to the lower left or by typing s also don't forget you can always skip a character's turn in combat by clicking the character or pressing the space bar Um, I see six javelins, okay, uh... Go ahead and put them on, and these are enemies. No, these are good guys. These are terrified arrivers. Not everyone adjusts easily to arrival in Avernum. This person is almost in a coma, staring into the dim green light and whimpering. The woman, watching, oh, the woman watching over them says, You might as well talk to me. I haven't been able to get a word out of them. Brissa. The Avernites built something down here, a crude stone structure that was then left to crumble. Four people, fresh from the surface, are hiding in the ruins. They look like ordinary people, farmers and merchants, who angered some empire lord or said the wrong thing when the wrong person was listening. Now they are trapped in the underworld for the rest of their lives, empty-handed and terrified. Only one of them seems to have kept her self-control. She is a young, stocky woman. She holds a crude spear in her trembling hands. Who is there? I... When she gets a look at you, she lowers the spear slightly. You are not one of the thugs, are you? I am Brissa. Are you trapped down here like us? How did you come to be here? The others? She looks at the three cowering in the corner. I don't know. They are barely able to talk. As for me, I suppose that I was disloyal to the Empire. Will they be all right? Perhaps if we can get out of these caves and get them a moment's safety. How are you disloyal? She winces. I refuse to give one of their mayors my favor. He decided to take his own petty revenge, and I would not speak of it further. I have another question. Brissa watches you closely. Her spear is always in her hands. What else do you need of us? I hope you have not joined those thugs. Um... All this fighting is wearing me down. Can you help me? She inspects you and nods. I found a crate of bandages, probably sent down at the same time as we were. I will do what I can. She spends some time bandaging your wounds. Most of the time, you will need to recover from your wounds by using the minor heal spell or returning to a friendly town. Do you need any help? I, I would not beg a stranger for aid, except that our situation is desperate. There is a cre cretin down here. His name is Logren, and he has a pack of brigands and thugs to help him. We can't escape this basement while he blocks the exit. I can't fight him off. I need your help. Can you give it? I will free you from these caves. She nods and looks at the others. For the first time, they look up at you, emerging a tiny bit from the catatonia. I thank you. I knew from the moment I saw you that you were a warrior with honor. We will wait here. She returns to standing guard and watching over the others. Okay, so it's a little harder to see, but... We should be okay. The people in the ruined building left two flasks of liquid on the table. Perhaps a gift for you. Perhaps a bribe to mollify the thugs ahead. These potions might help you if you have to fight your way out. To use a potion, open the inventory window and get a potion. To use an item like a lamp, scroll, or potion, press the sunburst button next to it. Right. Oh, I cannot even see them there, but... Healing potions. Um, everybody's pretty much got one, but... You take a second one, and 
I guess you take a second one. We'll start comparing their stats and skills later, which I haven't even done yet. Um, and I should probably do like now. Uh, let's go ahead and look. It's going to take a bit to really suss this all out. Um, but let's take a look at Alduis. He's level one. Three strength. Uh, let's go through it all. Strength is how muscular you are, improves your chance to hit and damage with melee weapons, enables you to wear heavier armor without being encumbered, having more of the skills of great benefit to warriors. Dexterity is how fast you are on your feet, improves your chance to hit and damage with missile weapons, reduces your chance of being hit in combat, helps you to act sooner in combat. Warriors and archers are aided by this skill. Intelligence, how good good you are at thinking things out and solving problems increases the character's spell energy and atten and helps to resist charming and other mental magic and endurance <laughs> measures how hardy you are the more endurance you have the more health you'll have and the less poison and other such afflictions will affect you also helps you resist harmful magic hmm then we've got health when you take damage your health goes down when you run out of health your character goes unconscious to heal, revive characters, return to a friendly town, increase your endurance when you gain a level to get more health. Spell energy, when you cast spells, your spell energy is reduced. When you run out, you can't cast spells. To regain energy, return to a friendly town or use a potion of energy. So he's got 16% armor resistance, 8% magic, fire, cold, poison resist, 16% acid, 6% mental, no curse. He's completely unknown. Um... He has no abilities, but he does have a point in pole weapons. Your skill in the use of pole weapons, spears, pikes, halberds, and combat increases both damage done and your chance to hit 1% per level. Also makes more battle disciplines available. And he's got a point in thrown missiles. Your skill in the use of thrown weapons like javelins or razor discs in combat increases both damage done and your chance to hit 1% per level. Uh, so let's take a look quickly, if we get out of here for a second. Um, oh, I wanted to look at... Let's give him the javelins that I gave to... Who did I give the javelins to? Did I give them to him? Oh, they, yeah, he has them. Okay. Cool. So let's keep looking at the character sheet. That's the combat. Then there's magic miscellaneous. He's got a point of first aid. At the end of combat, this skill will restore some of your health and spell energy. The more opponents killed during the battle, the greater the effect. The more of this present in your party, the better. Cave lore helps you calm hostile monsters, forage for treasure, and resist certain unpleasant magical effects. The more of this present in your party, the better the effects. So calms hostile monsters, forage for treasure, and resist certain unpleasant magical effects. Interesting. Tool use, how good you are at working with simple mechanical devices, for example, picking locks and disarming traps multiple characters can combine their knowledge that's interesting and we have to get a lot more of that from him because we don't have a rogue so um i should have went with a rogue actually i should have got the rogue instead of the archer i don't know what i was thinking mighty blows each level increases your damage with melee attacks by three percent so he's got 3% more melee attack. Then we've got... Um, but I guess this opens up once we decide to do what we want to do. Like, one second, guys. I'm just having a, a seating issue here. Once we decide to build the characters ourselves, we can go any which way we want. So she has pole weapon. She has two dexterity, but three intelligence. 24% armor. She has thrown weapons, too. She's got cave lore, but two in pre-spells, the ability to cast pre-spells, the higher the level of this skill, the more spells you can cast and the more effective those spells will be. Each spell has a minimum pre-spell skill needed to cast it. Trade, she's got healing focus one. Each level increases the effect of your healing spells by 3%. We've got an archer with dead eye, increases your chance to hit with missiles by 3%. Uh, point of cave lore... combat he's got sharpshooter 
Makes you much more effective with missile weapons. They will have a better chance to hit and will do more damage. Each level increases damage by 4% and chance to hit by 1%. We'll give him then the throne weapon. Oh, he doesn't have good throne missiles though. Bows, your skill in the use of bows in combat increases both damage and your chance to hit 1% per level. Makes more battle disciplines available. Melee weapon, your skill in the use of bladed melee weapons, daggers, swords in combat. Increases both damage done and your chance to hit. So even though he doesn't have thrown missiles, he does have sharpshooter, which makes him more effective with missile weapons. So he'll still have a 4% more damage and chance to hit by 1%. But everybody else has a pretty good percentage chance with the one thrown missiles they have. So um, he's got a 4 in dexterity. So yeah, let's go ahead and give our archer the uh, jabbies. Oh, he has a bow. Huh. Let's give Alduis the uh, true javelins then. And then finally, let's check out Cordelia. She's got two strength, three everything else. Um, she's got no combat skills, but she's got one priest, one first aid, one arcane lore, how familiar you are with magical lore, used to decode magical inscriptions and spells. The more of this in your group, the better. Also helps to resist mental effects. One spellcraft, increase effectiveness of all spells by 2% per level. One mage spells, the ability to cast mage spells. The higher the level of this skill, the more spells you can cast and the more effective those spells will be. Each spell has a minimum mage spells skill to cast it. And trade, she's got energy blessing. Increase your maximum spell energy by 5%. Mental focus exercises have improved your memory and enabled you to cast more spells without confusion. So we're not missing a whole lot except tool use. I'd like to see more tool use and maybe some luck. We'll get into those other skills as we unlock them. But right now, we're just going to come through here and uh, F3. And see what's next. Is there something over here? Rocks. Two pillars. Always useful to check both sides for possible trick buttons. I want to see how big they are so I get used to them. Here's Roland. Thug. Thug. After your meeting with Lagerin, you aren't surprised to find these people waiting for you. Three humans who have teamed up with two Nephilim. They smirk and raise their blades as you step into the dim light of their fire. As the reek of burning fungus assaults your nose, one of them says, Well, you knew this was coming. Lagerin let you know what was happening. I hope you're ready. At least you won't be in this pit much longer. Won't be in this pit. You mean we can escape? They laugh at you. Oh, I mean, you'll be in this pit forever. You just won't be alive to suffer through it. They advance upon you, greedily eyeing your weapons and armor. Okay, let's go ahead and switch to melee, or missile. That takes no AP to do. Um, let's come back one. Come back one, and fire on... Oof, they've got some talent here. Rolling. Alright, she's got smite, so let's press pre-spell. C, A. Nice critical. You've got a bow. So let's switch weapons and shoot. And you've got... You can summon a small beast. I can't put the beast where I want it, though. So far, we're pretty up here. Okay, there goes the beast. Um, uh, let's go ahead and smite him again. He's become B. Weird. And finally, a little 
little firebolt. Down he goes. Nice. Now we can switch weapons and advance into range. Um. We can just shoot. Mm, beautiful. Um. Hope you guys can see, all right? <clears throat> Shop, attack, bow, was someone running away, is that what they did or did he go back to get a better shot? I think he went down there to get a better shot. Flabbit, where'd he go? Get this thing. There we go. Alright, let's come back here and some dropped stuff. There's a wooden shield. We can give that to... We can pick it up. There's boots for 4%. Let's give you the wooden shield. Let's give Marion the boots. Then there's a crude dagger. It's worth 20, so we'll take it. Sticks, a sturdy twisted length of cave wood. Basic attack, punch, 5 to 20 damage. No value for the sticks. Okay, let's look around a little bit. No secrets on the walls. Just sticks on the ground. It's F3 and potentially go deal with Logren. You move cautiously down the corridor. You are past Logren's thugs, but their leader is still ahead. And without his key, you doubt you'll be able to escape this pit. This is a good time if you haven't already to save your game. Hmm. You round the corner and come face to face with Logren, a petty thug with delusions of grandeur. When he gets a good look at you, he realizes that perhaps his plan to build a new empire within Avernum is not going to work out. And yet he doesn't give in. He stands between you and the locked gate leading to the exit and snarls at you. You notice dark stains around his mouth. Perhaps he has eaten something recently that is tinkering with his brain. He points his blade at you. You got past my warriors and what? They are dead? Well, I will get more. The Empire sends down more killers every day. Avernum won't take them, but I will. You notice he's holding something in his offhand, but you can't tell what it is. <clears throat> Give me the key and I will spare you. Logren's brigand seems to think he, that this is a pretty good deal, but he shakes his head. I am no fool. I can start again once you are dead. I won't let them throw me into the abyss. Come on. He charges you. His warriors seek no other option. Regretfully follow him. All right, Alduis. Uh, suppose we should let them come to us, actually. So let's switch weapons and get a miss going. Um, smite, smite, smite. Maybe we can kill Logren and not have to deal with his... Antics. Oof. Oof. Okay. Uh, switch weapons and attack Logren. Um. Go ahead and put a shield out. Oh, it works on everybody. Nice. You do a little fireball on. Lagro, oof. Oh no, we should have healed him. Oh dear. Let's press U, right? No usable objects visible on screen. What do I have to press? Inventory? And... 
Drink a potion, cool. And then attack. Um, you can continue to smite. Dang, how much HP does Logren have? Um... We are barely hurting this guy. Oh, I think instead of smiting, she should be coming up here and attacking melee. Maybe. Uh, why is our creature not doing anything? Um... Head and heal Alduis. You shoot the cave wolf. Mm. Get of that. <clears throat> Let's go fight the Nephil Archer. And Use all of our magic here, why not? We have plenty of it to spare. Let's go ahead and switch weapons and come here and do a battle discipline of A or B. Ah, missed. <clears throat> Cast on. Oh, I shouldn't have brought her out in the open. Logren is wounded. He is bleeding and exhausted. No, you will not stop me. I have one thing. I smuggled. He raises his left hand, and you can see that he's holding a glass globe. Goodbye, fool. Enjoy your new life of servitude. He smashes a globe against the floor. A cloud of lavender smoke spreads out, choking you, confusing you. Logren turns and runs toward the gate, the key in his hand. Oh, what's going on? Paralyzed with fear, Logren has a free path to the exit gate. He puts his key in the keyhole, turns, and shoves his iron bars. Shoves the iron bars. The moment they are open a few inches, he slides through and runs upstairs. You immediately hear a commotion coming from above. Oh, we're still fighting, but we're paralyzed with fear. Okay, go uh, attack here. You come attack here. There's our zombie in action. Um, you attack the Nephil Archer, and you <clears throat> get the thug, crunch, <clears throat> pretty simple left over here. Nice, zombie. We've got a crude bow. Which we can give to you. And we've got a crude short sword. Which is the same as what we're using. No, crude dagger. This does 7 to 28 instead of 6 to 18. So we'll give that to Alduis. Very nice. Now trying to find what else is hidden on this floor is going to be a little tricky. Just going to press G a lot. M4s, bags of meal, dried mushroom power waiting to be made into bread. Those look good. They're worth 40 apiece. Bars of iron are good. They're worth 30 apiece. <clears throat> nice. The M4s are not worth anything. Anything down here? Nothing. Clay pots, they look like jars of honey. Um, oh, a bunch of rats. Hmm. We're a little better equipped to handle the rats now. Very 
Very good. Hmm. Probably should give her a ranged weapon of some sort. And firebolt. Okay, they dropped meat. 25 charges one. Sufficient to sustain life, if not happiness. Heals for five to nine. Call to us to meet, pick up the flawless crystals, two of them. No secrets that I see. Come up here. There's something on the ground here. <clears throat> Healing herbs, value 60, can be taken to alchemists in towns and converted into potions. Um, Alduus can carry them. Mushrooms have a charge of one to heal for five to nine. Okay. Um, actually, Alduus can go ahead and eat a meat. Not seeing any buttons. Still looking out for them. F3, we come down here. Uh, nothing on the ground, but there is a box here. With sheet of papyrus, nothing. Scroll of radiate ice affects nearby foes 26 to 86. Base cold damage, I guess anybody can use that, so we'll give that to Alduis. Oh, I did not mean to do all that. And we've got bars of iron we'll take. <clears throat> Should we go back and tell them that we took care of them, or? Movement speed is nice and on point. Lagrin is gone, you can escape now. She is so relieved that for a moment you think she might break into tears, but then she starts nudging the others with her shoe. Come on, let's escape while we can. As they rise, she turns to you. I thank you. This has been a rough arrival, but perhaps things will improve. She thinks, but I doubt it. Then she turns and begins to escort the others toward the exit. Conversation ends. The character has gained a level. Everyone's level two. Press the info button to learn how to train your character. Right. Um, what were they standing on? Stone blocks? No. All right. Um, let's also get on out. These people are moving as quickly as they can, which isn't actually that fast toward the exit. They don't stop to talk to you. I clicked them by accident. Ah. <clears throat> Awkward. Alright, cool. So, do we level up right now? Um, we're in some more XP as they got out of there. Uh, let's see. You gain levels by completing quests and defeating foes. When you gain a level, you gain skill points. You can spend skill points to improve your skills. Press the plus button to increase your base st statistics, strength, dexterity, etc. Then select the skills to the right you wish to increase. So we have one point to spend on attributes. And we have... Oh, maybe it's one point overall, even including these. Right? I don't see a skill point. And why can I not change the... Huh, I guess we have to pick a skill point first. Um, for Alduis? Oh no, we're on Cordelia. Um... Cordelia was our magician, so I would go Intelligence. Now choose the skills you wish to increase. Use the tab at the top to change the set of skills you're looking at. Two points to spend here. Oh, and they can't get certain... Let's cancel out for a second. They can't get certain uh, trees? Is that what's happening? Alright, we have to do this. Um... Let's see. Arcane lore. How familiar you are with magical lore. 
to the code, magical inscriptions and spells, spellcraft, mage spells, priest spells, first aid. Sorry again, guys, but I'm going to save here first and then make my changes. So intelligence, and then I'm thinking arcane lore. Oh, you can't increase the skill yet. It can only be as high as the highest skill below it. Oh, free. Oh no, it interconnects with mage spells. So let's get a point of mage spells and a point of arcane lore. Oh, we get a perk here to choose. Well, a trait. These special abilities help you to customize your character. The grayed out traits will become available as you gain skills and levels. So we can get, she can be in good health. Increase your maximum health by five percent. Exercise and clean living have enabled you to absorb more punishment than weaker warriors. Nimble fingers increases tool use by one. Elemental focus increases the effect of your elemental damage spells by 3%. Healing focus, healing spells by 3%. Improved endurance, each level increases your endurance by one. Improved intelligence, each level increases your intelligence by one. I think we will go ahead and make Cordelia. Um... Improved intelligence. So her intelligence actually goes to what? Shouldn't it go to five? It should go to five, right? Four plus one. Hmm. Okay. What type of damage is her fireball doing? Can we figure that out? Ah, here we go. Does not say. Just says what she has. Alright. Cloak of Curses and Days have opened up. Guess we don't have to learn spells. They just come with the level up. So let's go ahead and check those out. Cloak of Curses gives your group's attacks a chance of putting a random curse on the target. You can only have one cloak at once. And then there is Days, confuses all nearby enemies. They will have a chance of not being able to move or attack for a short time. Always like that. Days for three turns. All right, let's go ahead and level up. Um, Mycroft. Or Mycroft. Um... For a point, I guess we'll go ahead and get... Pretty much dexterity. <clears throat> Combat, magic, and missile. Good cave lore. Luck helps whenever something random happens around you, which is often. When your luck is high, everything will go better for your character. Combat. Um, he's got two in bows. One in melee weapons. One in sharpshooter. Increases damage by 4% and chance to hit by 1%. Which could unlock either sniper. Gives remarkable speed with missile weapons. Um... We get a point of that actually. Gives remarkable speed with missile weapons. Give a five percent per five percent per level chance of taking a bonus shot in a combat round, and a three percent level chance of inflicting a harmful effect on your target. Let's get one point of that. And uh, I think we'll get a point of cave lore as well. Or should we go ahead and ah? Wait a minute. Let's do Alduis first. Alduis, Alduis, Alduis. Probably want to go Endurance with him. And Tool Use for sure. Makes more effective with all blade and pole weapons. Each level increases damage by 3%. Chance to hit by 1%. Also helps you recover from fatigue more quickly. 
We don't have a pole weapon yet. That's why I'd maybe like to save these points. Um, let's just save it. Oh, you can't press the cancel button if you want to do training later. Yeah, let's do training later. Uh, how about you? Our, what class were you again? Shaman, I believe. <clears throat> Pre-spells. Arcane lore. Um, <clears throat> cave lore. So there's different ways we can go with each person. I would probably go dexterity with McCroft. Go sniper and and cave lore or tool use. Probably tool use. And uh Gymnastics makes you far lighter on your feet. Each level of this skill gives a 2% chance of evading enemy attacks and 10% chance of starting combat rounds with a bonus action point. Um, hardiness acts like natural armor. Each level of hardiness reduces damage you take from all sources, even magic, poison, and acid. Let's go ahead and get a point of Sniper. I don't know. I, he's already got two in bows. I kind of see him as a cave lore kind of guy. And nimble fingers, sure aim, increases damage with missile attacks by 3%, improved dexterity. Did I won? Hmm. I think we can go ahead and get him nimble fingers. Increases tool usage by one. Okay, so he's done. That'll let us figure out Alduis a little bit more. Or we can go endurance. And maybe a point of first aid. Oh, we can't increase that yet. How about tool use? And first aid. And then he can go ahead and get improved endurance. Increases your endurance by one. So he's the hardy one. And here we have the strength one, Marion. Um, who's got cave lore? <laughs> I just have to, like, get the hang of this. You have two cave lore. Two, one, two tool usage, one plus one. Okay, so we kind of need, like, the more magical stuff now. Strength. Um... First aid and pre spells. Go ahead and give her energy blessing, increases maximum energy by 5%, or good health, increases maximum health by 5%. Let's give her that. She's got good health. That looks good. Or we can get improved intelligence. Increase your intelligence by one. Let's start with good health and then we'll get another trait. We can go ahead with improved intelligence or something. Um, looks good. Boom. We are leveled up. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, I would alt tab to go check how long we've been playing and I probably should. But I will go ahead and save here first. Um, that's episode two.
I do hope you're enjoying thus far. I've been playing 40 minutes, so I will go ahead and wrap it up. It did crash, which was ex as expected. But we did reach civilization almost. Not quite, but we got the achievement for it. But I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, I sure did. <laughs> I'm really loving the game already. Again, I've played it a few times, but did not get all that far into it before getting distracted. Not saying it's a bad game. It's a very good game. And we're going to play a lot more of, it, more of it going forward. So I hope you'll join me for that and tag along on this sure-to-be-epic joiny. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you all. Much love, peace, and joy. Hope you enjoy the LP as well. And I will see you next time with more. Peace out, guys. Boom.